I mean, honestly, I didn't think Samsung would make the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. I mean, the rumors came out and it's here. Yes, no one expected a 14.6 inch tablet from Samsung, but this presents the best opportunity possible. And as you guys know, I love to game on mobile devices and this is the right size device to do a lot of gaming on, especially if you don't have access to a TV. Now, the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is the largest and most premium version of the Galaxy Tab uh, series. And over the years, Samsung has really done a good job in improving what the Galaxy Tab can do. Now, this version of course runs the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor and uh, that's the only version there is. There is no Exynos version. So if you're looking for that, you won't find it with this device, but it packs in so much more, right? You've got this 14.6 inch real estate, 2960 by 1840, something like that in terms of the resolution. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The display is nice, it is vibrant. This is what I call a wallpaper display. Yeah, you can go through like Thor wallpaper, you can have a Batman wallpaper, you can have an Ichigo wallpaper. Uh, yes, links for the wallpapers down below, but honestly, just follow me on Pinterest. You'll find all my wallpapers there. This thing looks absolutely gorgeous, and it's just got a lot of real estate for gaming. As you've seen, I've been gaming on this, right? Now, before we even get into some of that gaming, you guys wanna know benchmarks. What are the benchmarks on this device? You guys know I don't like benchmarks whatsoever, but I'm gonna give you the benchmark scores so you can actually see them for yourself. So we look at our, our Geekbench scores. This is our CPU benchmarks right here. You can clearly see what it stacks. Decent, nothing crazy on there. And then let's go ahead and check our compute scores. Uh, and compute scores, OpenCL, right here. And then of course we have Vulkan scores, right here. Now the reason why I'm giving no commentary is because I think benchmarks really don't really don't really matter. At least with a lot of modern smartphones, it's it's neither here or there, right? But we do have one more benchmark for you. Uh, this is of course Wild uh, Wildlife Extreme uh, test stress test. This is from 3D Mark, and this one is a bit interesting with the stability there at 69%. You can see the numbers a bit lower than what I ex would have expected. Um, from from this device, especially because you've got something that's larger. Now, this device has an 11,200 milliamp battery. You also have uh, storage options going from 128 to 512, from eight gigabytes of RAM to 16. Now, this scores might be indicative of the model I have. I have the model that's eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, because I pre-ordered mine from Samsung, which was, uh, the 12 gigabyte version and uh, it got delayed. So I ran over to Best Buy to pick one up and all they had was the 8128. So that's all I can say, at least with in terms of numbers and benchmarks. But let's take a look at some of those games. Now, right, starting off, of course, with our trio of standard games, we've got, of course, Call of Duty Mobile. Now, before we even get to that, what I'm gonna tell you is that Android games don't necessarily scale too well visually on a device with such a large display. It's just a hard thing for you to do. And honestly, this display is pretty big. Can I hold it with one hand? Oh, look at that, I can, I can. I can hold it with one, two fingers actually. Whew, it's hard. But anyway, um, Android devices don't, Android games don't necessarily scale well visually on this, not all of them. So Call of Duty is one of them that you can kind of see the artifacts. But I ran out of the max settings and I was able to get 60 frames per second. Now, you're seeing a screen recording of my benchmarks. Now, some of you said I don't use the right tools. That is Geekbench, and that is a professional tool. Um, and uh, I was getting 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna kind of show you this way so you, you, you get a good idea. Now, the next game, of course, is, is PUBG uh, Mobile. Now, PUBG Mobile, able to run at Smooth Extreme, to get 60 frames per second on there. And uh, Smooth Extreme ran well, no issues whatsoever. And we also ran here on Ultra HD Ultra where we got 40 frames per second. So it's matching what you get with your standard smartphones. Then we of course checked out Black Desert Mobile. And Black Desert Mobile runs at 45 frames per second, pretty much set and locked that um, in terms of just the gameplay elements on it. Now, that's actually pretty cool. So you can see it gives you a very similar feel to what your smartphone does. Then we move over to 
um, Real Racing 3. Now, Real Racing 3, the reason I picked this, of course, is to check out the, the, the refresh rate, 120 hertz refresh rate on there, and we're able to get 118 to 120 uh, frames per second while gaming, using, playing uh, Real Racing 3. So that is actually good. Now, Genshin Impact. We know Genshin is just not optimized doesn't matter what system you use, unless you're of course you're using a ga dedicated gaming phone. Now, I've thought, okay, this is a tablet, uh, which you can of course do more with, uh, with in terms of just maybe uh, clocking it higher, and you've also got a bigger battery and all that fun stuff. But in terms of uh, uh, frame rates, I actually got 45 frames per second. I played 30 minutes in total. Uh, there were two games I recorded. Uh, for this, um, one was about 10 minutes long, the other was 20 minutes long, it was about 43 and 45 frames per second. But when I actually connected it to the computer, it was 45 frames per second. So that's what I got standard for Genshin Impact. Now, I thought I would get more, but if you think about it, this device is really thin. If you look at it all around, it's a very thin device. So I don't think there was any chance of kind of overclocking it or moving the CPU higher so you can get that locked 60 frames per second for. Genshin Impact. But that kind of brings us to the question, when you have something this big that really feels like an entertainment piece, and honestly, like watching video content on this is really impressive, um, do you want to just play Android games, right? Like, is that what you really want to spend your time on? Do you want to actually play something more? And I think this is the, this is the exact tablet size for your um, game streaming services, whether it's Stadia or Xbox Game Pass. Now, speaking of Stadia, I, was, I wasn't I was able to actually play any of the games of Stadia. They must be just something that needs to be updated because I can launch the app and once I actually start playing the game, I can hear everything, but the screen just turns black. So that's something that gets fixed for the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And maybe just the screen size just not supported at this point in time. But when you go to Xbox Game Pass, Ah, oh, this is beautiful. I was able to just play all around the house. I, again, I'm shooting from home here. Uh, I was able to just put in different locations around the house because I've got something that I can just place around everywhere and game. And of course, you're definitely gonna need your Xbox controller for it. I think this is just the, the right uh, pairing, if you will, with these two in terms of just uh, a gaming experience. And Xbox Game Pass, Played well, 60 frames per second standard, able to jump through different games. I played some Halo Infinite, I actually played that for a while. Finished the section that was kind of just, you know, stuck up, but just hanging around for a while. Um, I also played uh, Forza Horizon 5. I played some Mortal Kombat as well. Uh, you know, just play, played some games there, as well as also Injustice too. So it just felt good and it played well. You've got Wi-Fi 6 capability built into this device to so give you that wireless connectivity at the high, highest level with Wi-Fi 6E, which is also good. But the battery life is impressive. 11,200 million batteries, two days. I literally used it for two days before I charged. I mean, gaming, testing, all that stuff on there. That was to me truly impressive with this device. Now. Some of you are gonna ask, what about temperatures? The reason you're not seeing the temperature gun here is because I didn't feel anything. I mean, the most it got was slightly warm, like I was just using my, like you use your cell phone daily. It just felt maybe a little warm, just even, and when I mean a little like a smidge, to the point where I didn't notice this thing go warm at all. That was impressive. So temperatures, I think you're gonna like with this device when you're using it. Audio, right? You've got quad speakers, not dual speakers, not stereo speakers, quad speakers. So especially when you see me gaming, using holding my hands where my hands are covering the bottom speakers here, you still have the two top firing speakers, giving you some very rich sound, but honestly, just, just listen to it yourself. Yeah, yeah, it is impressive. And I almost forgot to mention the dual front camera. Yeah, you've got a notch on the device. And I, when Samsung announced it, I was gonna actually complain a bitch about it, but 
I kind of almost skipped the whole video without actually mentioning and I haven't paid attention because at least this has a lot of functionality here. You've got a wider, uh, uh, wider angle lens in there and you've also got auto framing, which is great to use. So this works well for video conferences and you can also take a quick listen to the microphone. So here is a look at the camera of the S uh, Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And um, we can switch to, of course, the wider camera, which we do have. And this gives you, of course, a better view. And I actually prefer this also more, especially for video calls. So that's one of the main things you can actually do with this. The microphone should pick this up pretty well. And of course, you saw auto framing in, in action. So that was actually pretty cool. All right, let's, uh, let's finish up this gaming video. Yeah, I mean, I think as a package, the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is solid piece. I can see why a lot of people are climbing for this and you know, I technically kind of sold out. I haven't even talked about a lot of the tablet features and all that stuff, but this is just gaming. But I wanted to highlight some of these things for you. I, I mean, it's an awesome tablet to use. And if you're looking to pick up a, a, a Android tablet, a Galaxy tablet, and you want something you can take with you on the go, travel, pff, this, this is the tablet to go with. This is also the tablet to game with, and dare I say this might be the Xbox Game Pass tablet. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you wanna see more videos about gaming on say the Galaxy S22 Ultra, I do have that. Or you wanna see how Exynos performs, I have that video as well. Otherwise guys, thank you very much. Go check out those videos and always enjoy your entertainment. Wallpapers down below.